good. Good morning. Morning. It's really low today. It is? Yeah. We should do it like this. No, look like this. Put your eyes there. Put your... <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> You're goofy. Why? Because. <laughs> You're a weirdo. Why are we messing with the camera so much? You you keep touching it. Stop it. Now you're showing the coat rack. We never show the coat rack in the corner. Oh my god. You guys want to see my coat rack? Is that better? I guess we're way in the bottom of the screen, but whatever. Isn't that the way it was? No, we always do it like this. Oh. Okay. Sorry. So guys. Get over. Today uh, is Tuesday night for us, Wednesday morning for you guys. God bless you. Um, man, today was an amazing day. I'm not going to tell you why. Every day is an amazing day. No. Um, we had a, uh, a meeting with our district superintendent for Northern California, for Grace International. All the way in Fairfield. In Fairfield, which is a little over an hour drive. It's always good to see Pastor Scott. He's the pastor there in Fairfield and um, showed us around the church. And man, it's really nice what they're doing there. Yeah. Their church is basically open 24-7 because upstairs they have living quarters uh, for men. And then in the bottom for women mm -hmm. that they bring in. Like They have such a good rapport with the city that somebody's going to get sentenced to jail and if the pastor goes in there the judge will straight up release somebody into his custody yeah you know and because guys jail does not rehabilitate you know and i understand it's a punishment but it should also also be a place to 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 rehabilitate and here they're given an opportunity not only to be rehabilitated but to be introduced to Jesus. Yeah. So it was awesome with their with the the work that God is doing in Fairfield. Yeah. yeah. They have a, a women's home and a men's yeah. home. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah. So we got to see a lot of the interaction today while we were there and man, we spent a really good amount of time over there. Yeah. 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 And then um <clears throat> we the actually re the reason why we were there. Yeah, the reason why we went is because a couple from our church is um, is being going through the ordination or licensing, and um, so that we went with them from House of Rest for House of Rest, and uh, they had to meet with him as the final. It's a final. It's a final interview, pretty much. Yeah, the final interview. Process, They've yeah. done the courses. They've done the application, uh, our letter of recommendation, all that stuff. So this is the final thing. So. Um, I'm really excited and proud for them. Yeah. You know, and and then we had a treat because um, in order to do the interview, there has to be two, him and, and another Grace and International another pastor, pastor, aside yes. from us, the sponsoring pastor. And um, so he had Pastor Rick from Reno. And um, we since, had him on the phone. Yeah. Well, since Reno's so far away, it, he was going to have to be on the phone. So the whole interview started with him on the phone. Mm hmm. And then, like, what, 20 minutes in? No, a little bit more, like half an hour. Yeah, half an hour into the interview, he interrupts us. He goes, hey, hey, hey. He goes, are you guys at the church? You know, at the Fairfield Church? We're like, yeah. And he goes, okay. He goes, I'm coming in. <laughs> and he walks nowhere. in. He walks in. Reno is far. Like, we're talking two and a half hours away. Way up in the mountains, like, on the border. Of, he lives on the border of Nevada and California. And... And he just says, I'm coming in. And we're just like, what? Yeah. Are you kidding me? And he just shows up. And that was such a blessing because we we only get to see him when we go to conference or when we have our regional yeah. our regional um, meetings and stuff. And it's such a blessing to be able to get, you know, get to fellowship and meet meet yeah. with him or just to sit yeah. down and talk with him because he's he's such a 
an amazing man of God and just a blessing to fellowship. Yeah, so if you time. are in the Reno area, yeah. anywhere near there, comment and we will give you all of the church information that he yes. has. Amazing man of God. Um, and every time we go to conference in, in, in San Diego, Oceanside, we always make sure to have dinner with him. Yeah, and, and just, he's part of our covering, so yeah, yeah, yeah he's you'll, part of, you'll be blessed. Yeah, he's part of Grace International also. So um, he just walks in, man, and it was so good to see him. Number one, it's good to see him. And number two, literally a few weeks ago, he had open heart surgery, you know, in Stanford. Like, and so he finally got to sit and really share with us um, some of the things he experienced. And this is kind of what brings today's topic. Yeah. You know, and want me to run him down about what happened with him in the first place? or? You go ahead, sure. Yeah, um, he's a he's a wrestler. He's a trainer, no, a coach for wrestling, mm -hmm. high school wrestling, I think, yeah. or something. Yeah, well, because his son. Yeah, his he, son. He trains his son too because he used to wrestle. Yeah, well, well, he still does. Yeah, yeah. He still wrestles, and come to find out, he started passing out like out of nowhere. Starting last year, he would just be, just doing nothing, and boom, he would just pass out. Even to a point where he was driving and he could mm -hmm. feel himself passing out, and he would tell his son. Son, I'm I'm gonna be passing out. I feel like I feel like I'm gonna pass out, and if I pass out, you know, I'm gonna have to pull over, and yeah. and he can feel himself passing out. Yeah. yeah. So they were trying to figure out what happened, and finally, um, you know, uh, they found there was a, a huge hole in his heart where he was operating at a very low oxygen level mm -hmm. for his whole life, and he's so active in, in wrestling, so he thought. Oh, I'm getting tired because I'm overexerting myself. Mm -hmm. He didn't realize that he wasn't at 100% oxygen like most of us are. So there was a huge hole in his heart. And um, and basically it came down that he... How many... How, how long did he did his heart stop? Uh, the first time he said about 14, 14 seconds. 14 seconds. His heart stopped. Okay. Now, you might say 14 seconds, but watch. One two, three, four, That's still going five, fast. six, I'm going to time, oh. eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. His heart stopped for that long. How do we know this? Because he was already going through stuff. So they put this thing on him that they told him, whenever you pass out, we need to know what's going on. Press that right before you pass out. So he, that's when he was driving the last time. Mm -hmm. So he says, son, I'm a, you know, and I forgot what he said. He pushed that. So anyways, later on, they saw what happened. And they basically said his heart stopped for 14 seconds. And then after it happened again, and he did it again, and it stopped for a certain amount of Eight time seconds. again. Eight seconds. Yeah. So that's a long time, right? Anyways, um, he had surgery. They fixed the problem, praise God. And it was so good to see him when he walked in. You know, I hugged him, and I, man, it just made my day. Yeah, and I didn't him. even realize that he was going through all of yeah. that until today. I, I, oh, I knew he, had, he was having surgery the whole time. I didn't realize the extent of it until he, he opened and he showed me the scar. I'm like, dude, they went into your heart? Yeah. I like, I knew he had that. surgery, but I didn't know it was like that. Yeah, I didn't know that at all. Um, so, anyways, um, he shared something today. And we asked him if we could talk about it. Yeah, we did. You know, first, because I wouldn't want to talk about somebody's business, but he shared that when his heart stopped those 14 seconds, uh, he shared about what he saw. Yeah. Do you remember what he saw? How he said it? or About um, seeing the light. Well, what happened? Do you remember it? Or do you not don't remember? Really, not really. Not, not exactly in detail. Oh. Well, he said that he felt himself passing out because he had already had been happening since last year. And he says that it was no pain, no nothing, that all of a sudden he was in this place. And he said there was like a little fence, remember? Like a little short oh, yeah, fence. Yeah, yeah. And he said standing right there was this angel. And he goes, it wasn't dreamlike. He had gold, gold hair. Yeah. He, was, he had gold hair. He was not blonde. Mm -mm. 
He was, I mean, gold, like gold made hair. out of gold, like gold hair. And the fence was gold. Yeah, the fence was pure gold. The fence was pure gold. And um, he said that. He had a choice that they that that well, it, it, the the angel gave him a choice yeah, to well, go. Well, first of all, he um, said that. Oh, I forgot what I was gonna say. Um, they had gold. Yeah, he had gold, and it's something else. Dang it! What was I gonna say? Uh, uh, I don't remember. We're chopping it all up. Huh? We're chopping up the whole story. Yeah. Uh, oh, I remember what I was gonna say before that part. He 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 was very adamant. He said, "Guy, he was. It wasn't like a dream, like." You know how you can tell when something's a dream or it looks dreamy or in a movie when they try to uh, re recreate a dream, it looks like like foggy and he goes, no man, he goes, this angel was standing there with gold hair, gold fence, as clear as you are right now in this room, he said. That's what he said. He was, It was just clear. He was, and then that's when he said he called him and he was getting closer to the fence and that's when he was given a, he said, no, I'm not, no, I'm not going. Mm-hmm. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. I'm not going. And he said, boom, he came back and he saw the paramedics around him. And uh, so then he goes, you know, I've been, I've been wanting to share this with you guys, you know, because in the same way we respect him, he respects us. I mean. And then he said he, that he, he asked God, that he talked to God about it and he asked him. Yeah, when he took, they took him to the hospital, huh? Mm -hmm. And he said, "Can turn the TV off." He he, he needed to like think about this vision yeah, he saw. Yeah, and he wanted to talk to God about it and ask God what that was about. Yeah, and and he's like, well, he said one thing I noticed was, I had a choice. Mm -hmm. He was, I could have went. He was, and then it, he he said, I came to the thought of, why did I stop? Why didn't I want to be there? Because he said, man, the presence of God was there. The God was there. And yeah, why didn't I want to go? Yeah, why didn't I want to go? And and I mean, Lord, it's you. Why wouldn't I want yeah. to go? Yeah. Yeah. Why He goes, why did I say no? You know, and and he just said he was just kind of wrestling with the thought of, of this vision he saw and, and him stopping it and him, the fact that he even had a choice to stop it. You know, and which went into another conversation. Remember how there's loved ones that we actually tell them it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You can go, you know, and, and I've, I've seen it where people will hold on even if they're sick, even if they're racked in cancer, even. And, and it's like they got to be given that permission to go. Yeah. And within hours they go. Yeah. It's like, and so he was, he was, he was this choice about, is it a choice? Yeah. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, so that kind of brings you now to... Uh, yeah, and... What else did he say about that? He said, yeah, he kept saying there was no pain. There was no... He was. It wasn't like this transition. It was just like you were here in this earth, and then boom, he was there. You know, and, and so I, I threw some scriptures at him. One is to be absent of this body is to be present with the Lord. That's what Paul says. You know, to, if you're not here in this body, boom, you're in the presence of God. And he also mentioned something that um, that God told him that. Mm, that, was, that was the main important that thing. That was the main thing about him being it was for other people, remember? It was something in regards to that. You don't remember? No, but that the yeah. whole point is that that's what it was for. It was because he was placed there so that he could share that with other people. Um, well, what he said was that the Lord told like him... It was he was the reflection of the image what, of... What he said is the Lord told him, because he was asking God, you know, why didn't I want to go, you know? And the Lord told him, he was, the way you're talking to me at that time, in that moment, as you were about to enter, my presence is the very same here on earth. Yes. That's, that's what he that's said. That's what he said. 
He goes, it's the same. You're not any closer to me when you die than as close as you are to me now here on earth. And he said he was blown away with that. And he goes, all of a sudden he realized that this is how he can minister to people. Yeah. Because Jesus is there. He's not in some distant place. No. He's right there. In the, he's right here right now. While we're doing this video, he's here and he's wherever you're at right now. Like, you won't be any closer to him in heaven than you are right now. Yeah, because he's, he dwells in you. Yeah, and that's kind of what blew him away. And, and you know, and that's when I told him it's, it's identity because it's your identity. Yeah. You know, and whenever we do speak to someone, whenever we do see our reflection, everything is going to be Christ and everything that we do and everything that we see. It's, it's because we're in his image. Yeah. Yeah. So we wanted to share this verse, this passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to what? 51 to 57. 51 to 57, okay. 1 Corinthians 15. I'm going to read it in the New King James and then Sharon's going to read it in the Message Bible. So here it is, 51. This is Paul writing to the church in Corinth. And he says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible, talking about our bodies, this, because our bodies corrupt. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has, been, has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying which is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But let me tell you something wonderful, a mystery I'll probably never fully understand. We're not all going to die. But we, but we are all going to be changed. You hear a blast to end all blasts from a trumpet. And in the time that you look up and blink your eyes, it's over. On signal from the trumpet from heaven, the dead will be up and out of their graves beyond the reach of death, never to die again. At the same moment and in the same way, we'll all be changed. In the resurrection scheme of things, this has to happen. Everything perishable taken off the shelves and replaced by the imperishable, this mortal replaced by the immortal. Then the saying will come true. Death swallowed by trumpet life. Who got the last word, O oh, death? O oh, death, who's afraid of you now? It was sin that made death so frightening and law code guilt that gave sin its leverage its destructive power. But now, in a single victorious stroke of life, all three, sin, guilt, death, are gone. The gift of our Master, Jesus Christ. Thank God. There's a few parts I wanna, I wanna hit on this. Um, you know, the biggest enemy to humanity um, I believe that there's demons of cancer, demons of addiction, demons of alcoholism, demons of depression. There's different spirits and demons, I believe, but the, the biggest one of all is death. Because that is the one that nobody can get away from. Because not everybody will have cancer, not everybody will have this, not everybody will have that. 
but the spirit of death will get everyone. Nothing can change that. Yeah. Until Jesus came. Until Jesus came. That's why it says here, in the resurrection scheme of things, it has to happen. Death has to happen. Everything perishable taken off the shelves and replaced by the imperishable. This mortal replaced by the immortal. It says, then the saying will come true. So, so it says, death is swallowed by triumphant life. It makes me think of like, like this vicious big fish that goes around swallowing up everything. And imagine that big fish is death. And it's just going around swallowing everything in its path. But all of a sudden, a big whale comes. And, and this fish that represents death, that just brought nothing but destruction, here comes, here comes a life, boom, and swallows it. It says, death swallowed by triumphant life. Whose life? What did Jesus say? I am the resurrection, the resurrection. and the life. And the life, yeah. So death is swallowed. By tra so this death, right? That's why I am completely against any time anybody puts a picture, a poster, a tattoo, or whatever of, of death. Or what do they call it? The Grim Reaper. Or in Mexico, the Santa Muerte. You know, in Mexico, they worship this thing. They worship the Grim Reaper. You know, and it's like right here, it says death is swallowed by triumphant life. So that, that spirit of death that has everybody, has everybody's ticket, Jesus came and destroyed it and swallowed it. And I love this. This is sarcastic because then it goes, who got the last word, oh death? Mm -hmm. Hey death, who got the last word? Oh death, who's afraid of you now? <laughs> I love that. Because then it says it was sin. It was sin that made death frightening. And, and law and that brought guilt that gave sin its leverage. It was given leverage. Uh, uh, and, it's, and it's destructive power. And then it says, But now, in a single victorious stroke of life, all three of them, sin, guilt, and death, are oh, gone. gone. The gift of our Master Jesus Christ, because of what Jesus did. So Jesus says, you know what? That's why the verse um, where it says... Um, uh, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Doesn't mean you're never going to die. It means death has no hold of you. You won't feel the pain of death. It means to be absent of this body, boom, is being the very presence of God like Rick. He His heart stopped in that instant, boom, he was in the presence of this angel. You know, and, and it's like God, it's like Jesus is looking at death and says, yeah, you thought you had him. You didn't even, I didn't even give that person to you for one second. That person didn't feel death for half a second because if, if, if they serve me, they shall never die. They shall have everlasting life. Boom, to be absent of that body means they're going to be present with me. Mm. And I love that right there where it yeah. says, oh, death, death, who got the last word now? Yeah. You know, it's like Jesus, sometimes we picture him as being like, like all the loving and this and that. Man, Jesus was sarcastic. He's sarcastic. He's like, death, ooh, I'm scared of you, death. That's what Jesus did. Do you realize that death rejoiced when he was on the cross? Because this spirit of death says, ooh, I got you now. Mm. I got you now. And I believe that they, those spirits had a party for three days. Hmm, that's right. But then the stone rolled away. That's right. <laughs> Ooh, woo! The stone rolled away. The Bible says that the Spirit of God was so powerful that death couldn't hold him down. Death could not hold him down. It was impossible. The stone rolled away. The Bible says, as a matter of fact, that an angel came and boom, pushed that thing. You know, it took, it took many soldiers, Roman soldiers, just to roll that thing 
to cover the tomb of Jesus, that stone was so heavy. But the Bible says that an angel came and boom, rolled that thing away. I could just imagine, yesterday you guys had the hardest time getting that toolbox. Oh, man. <laughs> just the toolbox. Sunday, you mean? On, yeah, on Sunday, when we talked about you guys getting a toolbox onto the trailer, and it took four of you guys, and... You guys had to empty the whole thing out just yeah. to get the toolbox, not even with the tools up there. Yeah. Can you imagine that stone? <laughs> Woo! But the body of Jesus, death could not hold him down. That's crazy. Death thought they had Jesus. Death thought finally they got him. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. No. He says, death, who's got the last word now? Matter of fact, the Bible says that Jesus made a mockery of death <laughs> because death has had everyone all the way from Adam. Every single human that ever walked this earth, no matter what great things they did on this earth, no matter what great words, no matter what great anything they did, no matter how righteous they were or non-righteous, no matter what, death is like, whatever, I got all of your ticket. And Jesus comes and he mocks death. He made a mockery of death because after three days he rose again. See, there is no Christianity without the resurrection. But with the resurrection, there is no, there's no nothing else. That's why he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Yeah, the truth and the life. Man, you know, sorry, man, I get excited because we serve a living God. Amen. I don't serve some God that, that is all dust and bone somewhere. Remember somebody told me, what would you do if they ever found the bones of Jesus? I'm like, you're crazy. There ain't no bones of Jesus because he's the risen Christ. He's the one, he's the risen one, you know? So I was trying to find that one where, where the angel, it says that the angel came, but I'm not going to sit here and, and, but it did make me think of that song, babe. What's that song? The stone's been rolled away, remember? Uh, I think on Easter. Stone was rolled away. I know which one. Yeah, remember? Nothing Can you find that? The... Overcome. Death, where is your sting? Yeah, that one. What song is that? Forever he. Um, yes. By Colby. Uh... Carrie Colby? Carrie Job? Carrie Job. Carrie Kobe. <laughs> Was that Kobe's That's sister? Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant's sister. <laughs> yeah, but um, guys, this stuff is powerful, man. Uh, I was hoping to find that, that what I was looking for, but he I mean, is alive. Is that what it's called? I believe so. But I was looking for the scripture here, but I probably won't be able to find it, man. Hold on, Just give me one second, guys. Um, yeah. I don't got all this stuff ready. I'm just going. I'm flowing. Um, right what's that? Well, I wanted the one when the actual angel came and moved it. That's what I was looking for. But uh, maybe not. I'm checking, I'm checking um, this one real quick, and if not, pues, I don't know what to tell you guys. Oh, wait, maybe it's here. Oh, there it is, Matthew chapter 28. Check this out. This is now after the Sabbath day, as the first day of the week began to draw, you know, chapter 28. Mm -hmm. Um, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb and behold there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven came and rolled back the stone from the door and it says and sat on it yeah. dang shafts of lightning blazed Woo! from him and his garment shimmered snow white I want you to picture this if Satan was anywhere in the world, because Satan can only be at one place at one time, that's it. I guarantee you, he was at the tomb. And he's like, ha, 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 I killed you now. I imagine Satan and all of his demons just laughing, mocking, mocking that they had destroyed Jesus. Not only destroyed him, 
but had him crucified, had him whipped, had, I mean, just destroyed him. And all of a sudden, the Bible says this angel comes and descends from heaven, boom, knocks that stone away. And I love that how it says this. He, and, the, and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. That angel sat down like this. Yeah, now what? <laughs> you hear me? Yes, I'm looking for something. Oh, no, I know. Now what? And it says this. It says his countenance, right? The, the, the angel that was, his, his face was like lightning and his clothes as white as snow. And all the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. There was Roman soldiers there that when they saw this angel roll this thing away, sit on, sit on the very stone itself, in other words, mocking death, the soldiers saw him and boom, they passed out because they couldn't handle the glory. And the, and the guards shook for fear and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, don't be afraid for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. Look at this. He is not here for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. I love, you know what's crazy? Guards, these, these Roman soldiers, big tough guys, they see this angel, they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but then to the women, the women didn't pass out. No. Why? Because these angels, they, they, were, they were being meek. They were just as meek, yeah. They were meek because angels, if you read the Old Testament, they had the power. One angel had the power to destroy an entire city. One angel could come and wipe out a whole army. So this one angel brought fear upon these soldiers that they passed out. But then they saw these two women, two, two women that loved Jesus, and they became meek. And the angel, I love that. So the angel talks to them and says, don't be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He's risen. And then I love this because the angel goes, come, see the place where the Lord lay. Basically saying he ain't there anymore. You found it? Mm -hmm. Does it have the lyrics? Is it instrumental? No. The moon and stars they fled. The morning sun was dead. The savior of the world was falling. You can hear it. Huh? His body on the cross. His body on the cross. His blood poured out for His us. His blood poured out for us. The weight of every curse upon him. This song is called Forever by Carrie Job. Man, check this out. One final breath he gave. The Son of God was laid in darkness. A battle in the grave. The war on death was, the war on death was waged. The power, of hell the power of hell forever broken. Death, where's your sting? Our resurrected king has rendered you defeated. Forever he's glorified, forever he's lifted high. Forever he is risen, he is alive, he is alive. The ground began to yeah. shake, the stone, the stone was rolled away. His perfect love could not be yeah. 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 Awesome. Now death, where is your sting, man? 
our resurrected king has rendered you defeated. That's just yes. beautiful. We serve the resurrected king. Jesus came to mock death and to point to death and say, where's your sting now? Because everybody that follows me, you will never have them, not even for half a second, because when they leave this life, boom, they will be with me in my glory. Amen. I mean, Brother Rick, Pastor Rick, his heart stopped for 14 seconds and he felt no pain. It was a straight transition. It wasn't even a, a fade, like a movie scene that fades into another. It was here, boom, he passed out, boom, he was in the very presence. Why? Because death wears your sting. Where's your sting, death? You know? So like he said in the end, he says, listen, we're in the very presence of God here and now. We don't have to wait till later. Mm -mm. We're in his presence now. He was, and now we, we have to operate in that sense that he is here. He's with us. He's yes. here now. Yes. Through your good times, through your bad times, through your tribulations, through your trauma, through your happiness, through your joys, through your marriages, and through your funerals. You know what I mean? Through the birth of a child and to the death of a loved one. I mean, he's there. Through everything. Through everything. He's here right now in this very room. I feel his presence here right now. He's here. He's here, you know what I mean? Like like a like 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 an incense that you light the incense and all of a sudden that aroma fills the whole room. He's here. And you know what's crazy is a camera can't even stop it because that aroma of the Holy Spirit, boom, will start to enter into everybody that's watching this. You know, like boom. Like tell me you didn't feel that. You that's know, the Holy Ghost right there. You know, something shifted um, the other day. We went to the ranch to David's parents' house and um, we were outside getting ready to leave. And um, out of nowhere, remember we, we prayed with your dad. My dad wasn't feeling good. And he wasn't feeling good. And, you know, and my mom was coughing. Yeah. And um, so we prayed for his dad. And, uh, and then my mom. And then, you know, and then mom, we prayed for her. And and then for your brother. Your brother happened to be there, and he's like, I have a headache. Yeah, so, that's right. My brother, and we prayed Pastor for him. Angel. And then something happened um, where David just said, let's just worship. And we began to worship. We just sang um, a song, the song Tremble, Tremble. Just Jesus. But we just started singing Jesus, Jesus over and Jesus. over. Jesus, Jesus. And you we, make the darkness tremble. Yeah, and we just kept singing his name over and over. Outside, in and the porch, in the country. Outside, in the porch, in the country. And, but it, and it, was, it was already dusk. The sun had already set and it was already dark. But we just kept singing. And, and, the chorus. Yeah, the chorus over and over and over. And the, the, the spirit just came upon us. And mm -hmm. we, it just man and we just broke and there was weeping and and there was praying and and it just man it was just it changed the entire atmosphere it just changed everything everything shifted and i'll tell you since that day things are just shift have just shifted in our family are in our family just absolutely like because even today when um his parents came by today we gathered together in the living room and we were listening to worship music together mm -hmm. and the presence just fell so strongly it was just so thick in this living room and it was just like man i mean tears started to come down my eye when as we were listening to the worship together and we were just talking about god's goodness again and it's just something's happening Things are just shifting and something beautiful is just taking place. And and I'm seeing it here with even us, with just the people that are surrounding us. And I'm just excited, man. I, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not even sure what I'm going to call this video. Uh, well, obviously, by the time you watch it, it'll have a title. But I hope this is encouraging for you in some way, somehow, that it spoke to you that it encouraged you, that maybe, 
let you see something in a different way than you had ever seen. That literally, it, it, we're not, I know it's so easy, it flies off the tongue like, yeah, he's resurrected, he's alive, man. When you start to really realize what Jesus did to death, this death that, watch, watch it, don't pull it off the thing, this death that completely had everybody's ticket and Jesus came says, nah, not mine, you don't got my ticket. Mm -hmm. You don't got my ticket, death, you can't have me. Yeah. You know? And when he resurrected and the angel, oh man, I just get excited. Yeah. You know, so, all right, guys. Um, it's already 40 minutes of your time. Hopefully, hopefully some of you had a good commute. I know some of you listen to this while you're commuting to work. Some of you while at work. Some of you when you wake up making coffee or whatever. Amen. We love you guys. Have a beautiful, blessed day. And, uh... Yeah, this Wednesday for them. So Bible study tonight, it'll be live. Mm -hmm. And make sure you jump on, you know, say some comments, say hello, say something and let us know you're watching. Amen. All right, guys. God bless you. Bye, guys.